Well, we know in Nova Scotia that the oldest um, archaeological site um, or evidence of human occupation or habitation is at the Burton Turrell, Colchester County. And that particular site dates to 13,500 years. When you look at this archaeological record that's left behind, there's no written record. The record's all in the remnants of, of tools and occupational sites that were occupied, like I say, thousands of years ago. We look at um, the faunal record, it'll tell us what kind of land-based, terrestrial-based um, resources are being utilized. So an archaeological record will tell you a lot about a people who don't have a written record. A typical um, wear is just basically any kind of uh, feature that you place in a stream that um, it's designed to impede the movement of fish so they can be either spared, netted, or captured in a basket. You get an inland wear, you're going to use that in a four or five week window of opportunity to fish female eels. You're going to use um, an intermittent wear to harvest salmon at the lower end of the river before they travel upstream. You're going to get the V-shaped oriented wear at the head of tide that's targeting, like I say, the gasparo, the mackerel, and male eels. So you're going to have a lot of spearing, a lot of dipping. Um, in that portion of the river with the fence stake wear, what you're having, it's a bush wear and it operates with the rise and fall of the tide. The Mersey River was um, probably gave us our first overall picture of how the entire river, the north end and the south end, was utilized or used by early Mi'kmaq people. The refurbishment of dams that were on that river allowed us an opportunity to see the archaeological record there that hasn't been seen in three or four or five thousand years. So it almost equates to pulling a blanket back off of history. You get um, bone needles, you get awls, you have thumb scrapers, you have different types of corner knots, side knots, projectile points, um, contracting stem projectile points. Um, and spear, spear heads you have, ulus, which are slate knives for cutting meat. It's incredible. Basically what we have today, they had in their day, just made of different materials. And you got to remember that the rivers were critical to Mi'kmaq people. We know from the archaeological record that they occupied some of the prime pieces of real estate in the province of Nova Scotia. We fished it, we hunted, we harvested on it. And that all changed with the arrival of Europeans. If you look back in some of the early colonial records, you'll see evidence of um, Mi'kmaq people harvesting salmon, harvesting um, porpoise, um, and other fish species which they would trade and sell. You get clams, you get a variety of shellfish, bass, shad, trout, eels, so you get, there's a rich, rich diet there at some of those rivers. When you look at the relationship with the non-native people and the Mi'kmaq people, you see adaptation. So the porpoise, in addition to being food, it also evolved into the, the oils. It was harvested and used for lighting as well, but primarily for sew machines and clocks. They would have um, a number of type of uh, canoes that would allow them just to travel ocean waters, um, inland fishery basically, what you're, you're talking an inland fishery. Um, so you have a river canoe, a lake canoe, and an ocean going canoe, so it would allow you to uh, access to each individual kind of water set. Yeah, when you talk about the early use of canoe, ocean going canoe, and Mi'kmaq culture, Early, uh, there's early historical records of them encountering Mi'kmaq in the Gulf of Maine. And the Mi'kmaq would produce maps of the shoreline on bark. And in this one particular recorded event, um, 
they drew a map of the Atlantic region, which included Newfoundland. So they obviously had knowledge of ocean travel. 